Ah, and God bless Apodato. Thank you, Justice Sam. To present the timepiece is serious with his work, but does not fail to remind us of the lighter side of life. Wise in his dispositions and unselfish in sharing his sense of humor, he provides light, metaphorically and physically, to the court. May I call Mr. Justice Edgardo L. De Los Santos. The time peace serves as a reminder, not only to our honorary, but to everyone else, that though we will power as magistrates, this power is ever finite, and so is the time we have. Trying to outrun time is an exercise in futility. In the end, we will have no choice but to hang our ropes, shed our titles, and remove our masks. Only time can tell if we will have done our sacred duty well. Just the same, we put our best foot forward, work to the best of our knowledge and efforts, and hope that we will have done our part. As Chief Justice Yusuado Peralta bows up from judicial service, he will be best remembered for his concern for the welfare of the court employees. This trait is specially highlighted now that we are experiencing a pandemic. His concern and responsiveness to the plight of the employees of the judiciary is a silver lining in these difficult times. The Chief Justice also leaves an important legacy, and that is the guidelines of continuous trial in criminal cases, which resulted in the speedy resolution of cases. His advocacy and concern for the rights of the litigants are hallmarks of his deep respect and obedience in the constitutional mandate that all persons shall have the right to a speedy disposition of their cases, because after all, Justice delayed is justice denied. Thank you so much, our dear Chief Justice, for everything you have done to the judiciary. Chief Justice Peralta, Godspeed in all your future endeavors. Thank you, Justice Edsa. Uh, Justice Mario Lopez seems to have been uh, disconnected. I think the technical people are working on it. So we go to the next. The colleague who will present the photo album is young, belonging to my generation, yet a leader in his own right. He crafts his refle reflections carefully, respectful and articulate. Sometimes it is on the right side when he votes with me. I now call on Mr. Justice Rodil V. Salameda. Thank you. Our, the photo album. Our lives are hardly ever static. We are always doing something, always in a rush, always on the move. That perhaps is the curse of one who always hopes to do more. But at times, in the midst of this constant motion, there will be stolen moments that we would be lucky to witness, those now frozen in eternity. The same goes for our honoree today over three decades worth of government service has produced a myriad of memories encased in the photo album that would attest to his valuable deeds, a celebration of a life well lived. Chief, you are an esteemed figure in the judiciary. The entire legal profession is grateful for the indelible marks you have left especially in the fields of criminal and remedial laws. Your term in the Supreme Court might end, but your influence continues through the decisions you have penned. Your ability to inspire extends even beyond your term of office. To the young, may you serve as an inspiration for them to take up and become men of law. To the hardworking, honest, and dedicated members of the legal profession, 
Let your resume serve as a reminder that hard work, perseverance, and trustworthiness are a part of the equation that stands the test of time. The entire body of your work can be called a legacy, something I would also want to leave when my stint in the Supreme Court ends. We will miss you, but for now, enjoy your retirement. You can finally wake up without having to rely on the sound of your alarm or have breakfast and drink coffee without worrying about meetings and deliberations. Just the Agnina, Chief. Thank you, Justice Rodil. The next token is fittingly assigned to our next colleague. He is soft-spoken, but his mindfulness of precedent and openness to principled accommodation speaks emphatically of his exemplary character. I call on Mr. Justice Henry Jean Paul B. Inting. Thank you, Chief. Chief M. The Book of Decisions. As has been mentioned, our honorary has penned a myriad of decisions that attest to the breadth and depth of his legal aptitude. All these are inscribed in the Book of Decisions, the sum of what we have written, as with those who have came before us and all that will come after us. Indeed, our words are now etched in jurisprudence. As he leaves the court, may he, the honorary, rest assured that he has done his part in fortifying the rule of law, a feat of both intellect and collegiality. The title of the Book of Decisions of our honorary epitome of hard work is befitting of his legacy relative to both the quality and quantity of the decisions and resolutions he has spent for this court. His reputation for producing landmark decisions as well as his work ethic in substantially reducing the docket this court is of great renown. He set a high bar for all of us in effectively and efficiently disposing of cases with an even hand and a scholarly touch. As a famous quote tells us, there are three things every man should do during his time on earth. Plant a tree, have a son, and write a book. I'm not privy to whether our honorary has planted a tree. I will ask him later with proper social distancing. Next, we all know our honorary has exceeded the required number of sons. Finally, let me just say, regardless of whether our honorary has planted a tree, he has planted something worth more than many trees, because the whole body of his written works as a member and later chief justice of his court will outlive a tree. It will benefit, guide, and enlighten the present and future generations of law students, lawyers, and other stakeholders in the administration of justice. To end, I wish to express my warmest congratulations to our honorary on his retirement and my utmost gratitude for his invaluable contribution to the growth and development of Philippine jurisprudence. Thank you. Thank you, Justice. Thank you. I now move back in the order of precedence to present the Supreme Court seal is a colleague who also hails from the same region as the chief and myself. He has displayed his expertise on many matters, many of which is within the fields also shared by the honorary. The teacher's teacher. May I now call on Mr. Justice Mario V. Lopez. Please unmute. Justice Mario, please unmute. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. T uh... Justice Leonen, a seal has a twofold purpose, confidentiality and identity. It ascertains that secrets have not been opened without the sender's authority and the address's consent, a guarantee against breach of trust. Likewise, as a marker of identity, the seal holds memories from the inner sanctum of the court. Those that happened behind closed doors, never bound by a bow of secrecy. The seal 
bears symbols of our faith in the reign of law. Our honor is reminded true that we must strive to always act in the name of the judiciary. If I may now say a piece for the Chief Justice, Apo Chief Justice Dado, <clears throat> may I take this singular opportunity to take pride and honor that I have worked alongside the leadership of a GI, a genuine Ilocano who is energetic, industrious, and hardworking. I am deeply gratified for the unique and inimitable kind of leadership that you have exemplified in the Supreme Court. In our periodic deliberations and official meetings, you always find a way to make us feel easy and comfortable on board by your customary sense of humor and anecdotal stories. Although, Mr. Chief Justice, there are times that you talk too much, but that talking much did not silence us. Rather, it encouraged and stimulated us to participate and express our intellectual concurrence and dissent. Thereby, you have ensured a truly democratic order in our judicial uh, process where collegiality prevails. At the end of the day, we are amused and gratified that we have accomplished more than what we need to tackle from the agenda. Mr. Chief Justice, I will not dwell much of your superior knowledge of criminal law. I am one of those who, who, who learned from you my criminal law when I was still a professor. I will not describe your authority or your exemplary accomplishment. I would only say that you are an astute authority of criminal law. In closing, Mr. Chief Justice, I wish you have many more years of well-earned leisure, sweetened by thoughts of high regard and affection from both the members of the bench and the bar, and still more because of the good and exemplary deeds that you have wrought in your honorable career. God bless you, Mr. Chief Justice. Diyos tikumuyog kadakayo nga kanayon. Thank you very much. Adyama na kaili, Justice Mario. Clearly, the next colleague who will present the Supreme Court pen is one of the favorites of the Chief Justice. Maybe because she comes from the same pontifical school. <clears throat> Unflinching in her principles, yet sisterly and motherly always in her approach. I call on Madam Justice Ami C. Lazaro Javier. Thank you very much, Chief Marvick. The pen is our most powerful tool in exacting justice. Within it lies the incredible power to affect a nation's future. As magistrates, it is our duty to hold the pen carefully. Through the ink it spills, the pen empowers the marginalized, liberates the oppressed, and protects democracy. Wielded carelessly, it may erase the good efforts built through time. Wielded justly, it can bring about the greatest change. May it always be within our honoris grasp so that he may wield it to the ends of justice, even after his retirement from the court. Chief, 
Here's honoring your over three decades of tireless service to the judiciary and celebrating the legacy of hard work and dedication you leave behind. Whatever plans you pursue in retirement, may you enjoy them all the more, knowing how completely you deserve this happy time of your life. Congratulations, Chief. Best wishes and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justice Ami. The brush shingle will be presented by a colleague who marks this court with her wisdom. Rising from the ranks of the judiciary like many of my colleagues, she unselfishly shares her views of the real, the possible, and the practical. I once told her that someone should start to write her biography for generations to come. It is really very interesting. I call on my schoolmate, Madam Justice Rosemary De Claro Caranda. Kindly unmute. Thank you, Chief Justice Marwick. <clears throat> the brush angle. The brush angle engraved with the honor's name is a symbol of the remarkable legacy he will leave the judiciary. Coated in fine brass, it will serve as a reminder of the degree of professionalism imbued in his leadership, humane and just service. Chief, a good name is perhaps the most important legacy a parent bequeaths upon his child. It is the same name that indelibly marks his journey through life, and still it is that which he bestows to the next generation. This brass shingle is an approximation not only of the prestige attached to his office, but also of the high degree of professionalism that Chief Dado has exemplified throughout the years of his dedicated service to the public. More than the title, his legacy has been engraved in his ponentias, exuding courage, wisdom, and understanding. Throughout his career, CJ Dado was never satisfied with just merely going through the every motions of his job. He always attended to his duties purposely to ensure that the work was done fast and it was done right. CJ Dado, I am truly grateful to have served under your leadership. I wish you good health as you enjoy your much deserved rest from the work, but I know you can do more beyond your retirement. May the Lord continue to shower you with a blessing as you embark on this new chapter of your life. God bless you, Chief, and your family. We salute you. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Rory. Still the youngest, yet certainly no more junior. Now one of the most senior among my colleagues. My colleague who will present the Supreme Court ring is a true public servant. Quick to understand, compassionate in his demeanor, hearty in, her, in his laughter. Always dependently rising to the occasion when called upon. I now call Mr. Justice Ramon Paul L. Hernando. Thank you, Justice Marby. The Supreme Court ring symbolizes devotion and fidelity. This is a fitting gift to our honorary who has devoted his life in the service of the public. He has performed different roles throughout the decades with complete fidelity to the lofty goal of serving justice and protecting our basic rights. His devotion and fidelity to his sworn duty never wavered despite the challenges that the pandemic had brought. Uh, Chief, my Ninong, 
my wife, Judge Cherry, joins me in this because you are our Nino during our wedding. Destiny is said to be the inescapable driver of human lives. We often subscribe to the convenient theory of what is que sera, sera, or whatever will be, will be. A form of external control that is wielded entirely by the discretion of somebody else other than our own persons. In your case, you have paved an admirable path, steadily mounting the ranks and ultimately achieving primus inter pares in our nation's Supreme Court. While you have definitely were fated for judicial renown, your accomplishments can never be deemed as byproducts of mere matters of chance. Rightful accolades and distinctions have followed you consistently from the time you joined the bench, primarily on account of your notable contributions to the speedy disposition of criminal cases. Your work is by no means trivial. With court dockets plagued by inefficiencies and the rules of procedures marked by techniques of legal circumvention, you pursued and frustrated its ardent culprits. Not only did you know what and who must be weeded out, you did weed them out. Discussion without active resolution is absolutely pointless for this man of action. I hold a sizable amount of pride and privilege of having served the Filipino public alongside Chief Justice Peralta. He lit the brightest of my professional torches when I took my oath as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court before him. And I also cherish a warm, perpetual feeling of elation of having him as our Nino in our wedding. Chief, you might not remember, but you were my professor in Roman law in my freshman year in law school. And it was in your class that I first came across the word pater familias. You, uh, Dinong, has always been a family man, a model of superb parenting, and an icon of what it is to be a good husband. You are to me an uber, pater familias. Your guidance to me was significant in my professional and personal journeys, for which I express my most profound gratitude. Ninong, may God's graces and blessings be with you all, together with your family for always. God bless you. Thank you, Justice Mon. Our colleague who will present the statuette of judicial excellence has checked all the boxes for what an ideal magistrate should be. He goes out of his way to assist others in a quiet, powerful, yet humble manner. His compassion reflects in his writings. He is an apostle that has not given up on atheists and agnostics. I now call <laughs> upon Mr. Justice Alexander G. Hesmundo. Thank you, uh, Justice Marbic. <clears throat> the statuette depicts Justitia, the blindfolded Roman goddess of justice, carrying the scales of balance in one hand and gripping a shipboard sword in the other. It embodies justice and authority. The scales represent objectivity, but the blindfold embodies impartiality. The sword represents judicial authority, guided by wisdom, fairness, and soundness of adjudication. May this statute always serve as guide to our honorary, who has been a prosecutor, judge, and now a member of this court. Through his ponentious and leadership, our honorary has exemplified what just authority means. <clears throat> Mr. Chief Justice Josdado Peralta, 
over the years that I worked with you, starting at the Sandigan Bayan, and up to this point, you have been generous in sharing with me your legal knowledge and skills, from which I learned a lot. For that, my sincere respects. Working with you at times is so stressful, as you are too driven to accomplish a lot in so short a time. But at the same time, it was enjoyable because of your anecdotes, stories, and jokes that made me laugh. On a personal note, I have called you Manong Dado as a sign of respect to an elder brother. That despite occasional disagreements, you have always treated me with respect like a younger brother. Having known you as, as early as my OSG days, when you were still courting then Miss OSG Audrey Lampas, I must say that you have been always, uh, you have always impressed me as home loving and luxurious in a positive way. Manong Dado, I wish you all the best. Thank you, Justice Alex. The presenter of the next two tokens, the Judicial Robe and the Judicial Medal of Distinction, considers deeply his positions, works collegially, but can be persistent on what he considers a matter of principle or an approach that is both practical, effect, and efficient. He has, on many occasions, spoken so eloquently for this court. I now call upon Mr. Justice Alfredo Benjamin S. Kagiwa. Thank you, Justice Marvick. First, the judicial robe. The judicial robe signifies the authority and elegance we wear as we perform our sacred duty of protecting the, the Constitution and serving the people. In its simplicity, the regalia signifies consistency, respect for civic authority, and constitutional fidelity. The purple trimmings represent sovereignty, honor, and dignity. For the last five years that I have been a member of the court, I have personally witnessed how our honoree has fully embodied what this robe stands for and carried the, bur the burden it holds in its very fabric. Indeed, the honoree has dutifully and fully shouldered the important and grave responsibilities that inhere in being a magistrate of the highest court in the land, and has done so with the self-assurance of one who seems to have been born for the position. Armed with his wit and infectious humor, the honoree has exhibited during his stint as Chief Justice, a unique style of leadership that has truly guided the court in these difficult times. A leadership that bespeaks the wisdom born out of the more than three decades of public service that have imprinted in him the very qualities signified by the rule, authority and dignity. More importantly, our honoree has exemplified and lived out these unmistakable virtues, both with the robe and without. And it is my personal honor to present this token now to him. Now for the Medal of Distinction. Traditionally awarded for extraordinary achievements or heroic service, medals are symbols for valor and eminence. Likewise, the Judicial Medal of Distinction is given to members of the highest tribunal who have rendered exceptional service by leaving no aged cases upon retirement. Adorned with a laurel wreath atop a golden sun, the medal manufactured by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas symbolizes the awardee's noble and tireless commitment to public service by adjudicating cases promptly and upholding the fundamental principle that justice delayed 
is justice denied. As a member of the highest tribunal in the country's judicial system, I have also witnessed how our honoree has set the prompt administration of justice high above his aspirations for the court. And as a true leader, he has made himself an exemplar of efficiency in the disposition of cases. Yet, beyond the admirable rate at which his cases have been disposed, the honoree's ability to accommodate opposing viewpoints in contentious cases, while retaining the respect of the other members of the bench, is even more laudable. Perhaps, more than the allure of the officer's stature, the singular fortitude that is required of the court lies in the honest and forthright resolution of the cases. Fully mindful that all controversies timely resolved are of, are of great consequence in the lives of the parties who come before it. In the face of a massive court docket, our honoree has remained steadfast and unrelenting in ensuring that systems are in place to safeguard judicious adjudication of the court's cases. For this, I consider it my privilege to present this medal of distinction in behalf of the court. Thank you, Justice Ben. I now present the gavel. As is tradition, the master of ceremonies is immune from any introduction. As a symbol of authority, the gavel is used not only to signal the commencement and closing of court proceedings, but also to call attention and to instill order in the courts of law. With each strike, one is reminded of their humbling journey from passing the bar to becoming erudite ju jurists whose leadership, commitment, and dedication are worthy of emulation and admiration. I thus present the ceremonial gavel to our honoree in comm commemoration of his formidable leadership, which instilled order and increased efficiency in our courts, enabling them to dispense justice with haste. Congratulations, Chief. Chief. And now to read and present the plaque of recognition, may I again call on Justice Alexander G. Esmundo. You are on mute, Justice Alex. Thank you again, Judge. Thank you again, uh, Justice Marbik. This plaque of recognition is quite a lot to read. Anyway, Republic of the Philippines, Supreme Court, Manila. The Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of the Philippines present this plaque of recognition to the Honorable Justado M. Peralta on the occasion of his retirement as Chief Justice of the Philippines for rendering exemplary public service for the past 40 years, beginning as a councilman of Fairview, Quezon City in 1980, then as Third Assistant City Fiscal in Lawag, Ilocos Norte in 1987, then as Assistant Fiscal, the second Assistant Fiscal of the City of Manila, for which he was chosen as the most outstanding public prosecutor of Manila for 1991 by the City of Manila. As one of the five finalists for outstanding public prosecutor nationwide, given by the Foundation for Judicial Excellence in 1993, and as the most outstanding public prosecutor of the City of Manila in 1994, by the Department of Justice. Then as re presiding judge, Branch 95 of Quezon City Regional Trial Court in September 1994, for which he was given the 2001 Special Centennial Awardee in the field of criminal law during the Supreme Court's 100th year, ce year celebration. And the 2002 Judicial Excellence Chief Justice Ramon Abanseña Award as outstanding RTC judge. Then as an associate justice in 2002 and presiding justice of the Sindigan Bayan in 2008. And as the 162nd associate justice of the Supreme Court in January 2009. 
and as the 26th Chief Justice of the Republic of the Philippines in October 2019, for being a staunch advocate of continuous trial in criminal cases, which enabled him to decide such cases within the regulatory periods and in accordance with law, jurisprudence, rules of procedure, and the Constitution, such that at the time he was promoted to the Sandigan Bayan, he left only about 25 active cases, down from about 600 cases when he started as a trial judge. For having registered as one of those with most number of cases, decided on the merits during his term as Associate Justice, and the most number of cases decided by the Sandigan Bayan during his term as its presiding justice in 2008. Because of the innovations and best practices he introduced, namely the stipulation on the testimony of witnesses, including documentary evidence, and the adoption of affidavits and statement of witnesses as their direct testimony, subject to cross-examination, which greatly reduced the long and tedious presentation of their testimonies. For managing his caseload efficiently and effectively, having disposed of more than 1,300 cases through the full-length decisions and extended resolutions, despite having inherited 1,128 cases, the most number of cases inherited after his appointment as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court in 2009, and leaving no more than 100 cases with zero backlog of aging cases. For writing decisions, which were instrumental in shaping our criminal law jurisprudence to the contemporary needs of the times, in shedding light on the outdated aspects of criminal law, and in bringing it ever closer to the true spirit, spirit of restorative criminal justice system, including the cases of corpus versus people, wherein the court ruled on the issue of imposition of the proper penalty for the penalty of Estapa under the revised penal code, thus paving way for the enactment of Republic Act No. 10951, Dimakuta versus People, wherein the court ruled that probation is not a right, but a special privilege granted by the state to a penitent qualified offender. Estipona versus Librigo, wherein the court declared uncon the unconstitutionality of Section 23 of the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs of 2002, which prohibited plea bargaining in all drugs cases. Hernan versus Sandigan Bayan, wherein the court in relation to RA number 10951 issued guidelines which govern the procedure for action seeking the modification of penalties imposed by panel judgment and the immediate release of petitioner convicts on account of full service of penalty as modified. And in inmates of New Believe it Prison versus Dilima, wherein the court declared invalid the provision of the implementing rules and regulations of Republic Act No. 10592, which provided for the prospective application of the grant of time allowance of prisoners for good conduct. For diligently serving the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal, HRET, as member since 2011, and as chairperson from August 2018 until his appointment as Chief Justice, and deciding all protests and co warranto cases that were filed with the HRET during the 17th Congress and before its term ended in June 2019. For steering the judiciary in the proper direction throughout the COVID pandemic, ensuring that the courts remain open and accessible through policy measures that would guarantee continued access to judicial processes without sacrificing the health, safety, and well-being of the 29,000 strong court officials and employees nationwide. For authorizing the adoption of skeleton stopping scheme in courts, designation of judges on duty, extension of court deadlines, physical closures of courthouses, adoption of video conference, as an alternative of mode of trial in civil and criminal cases, electronic submission of pleadings and papers. For crafting administrative orders to enable indigent persons deprived of, deprived of liberty to be released on reduced bail and recognizance, thus allowing the release of a total of 130,843 PDLs as of March 12, 2021, in order to protect them from the infection of COVID-19 if confined in crowded detention cells. For institutionalizing, institutionalizing 
the use of video conference, both in criminal and civil court hearings, which enabled the courts to conduct 222,767 video conferences with a success rate of 88% from May 4, 2020 to March 12, 2021. For advocating the automation of court processes and the incorporation of court technology in hearings and trials, such as e-courts, e-raffle, e-subpoena, e-warrants, e-piling, e-service of summons, notices, and e-payment. For imparting his experience and knowledge as resource person of the Philippine Judicial Academy since 2002 in the conduct of skills-based training seminars for newly appointed judges, prejudicature programs, and continuing legal education for court attorneys, government, and private lawyers, among others regarding the basic principles of and special issues on the revised guidelines for continuous trial of criminal cases, the rule of procedure on small claims cases, the bargaining in criminal cases, computation of penalties, as well as development and updates in criminal law and criminal procedure, civil procedure, rules on evidence, special rules of procedure on environmental law and the intellectual property law the Judicial Integrity Board, and other special rules of procedure where he is either a chairperson or member of the Rules Committee. For establishing the Judiciary Public Assistance Section, which assists and guides the public and court users and receives and promptly addresses complaints against magistrates and court personnel through telephone, mobile phone, text messaging, and email units. For implementing the Judicial Integrity Board and formally organizing it through the issuance of memorandum orders which pave way for the approval of its internal rules of procedure and the provision of its staff, office, and equipment. For streamlining the plantilla of the Judicial and Bar Council, the Philippine Judicial Academy, the offices of the Clerk of Court and the Division Clerks of Court, the Judicial Records Office, the Public Information Office, the Rolly Room, the, the Office of Administrative Services, the Fiscal Management and Budget Office, the Program Management Office, the Office of the Bar Confidant, the Office of Post of Justice, the Medical and Dental Services, and the Library Services, which guaranteed security of tenure and resulted in the regularization and the processing of the regular, regularization of hundreds of long-time casual employees and the appointment or promotion of qualified and deserving personnel. For depending the budget of the Philippine judiciary before the legislature for the past 10 years, thereby ensuring the necessary funds for court operations and reform projects, including the funding for the hazard pay of judges, the Philippine Judiciary Marshal Service, the digitization and regionalization of the bar examination and other urgently needed allocations in the 2021 General Appropriations Act. For leading and participating in the various Supreme Court committees, which to improve the fairness and responsiveness of the administration of justice, formulated and drafted several numerous procedural rules and guidelines, namely 1. The 2010 Rules of Procedure for Environmental Cases, 2 the 2011 Rules of Procedure for Intellectual Property, property Rights Cases, 3. The 2015 Rules in the Conduct of Special Sharia Bar Examination, 4. The 2016 Revised Rules of Procedure for Small Claims Cases, 5. The 2017 Guidelines for Continuous Trial of Criminal Cases, 6. The 2018 Internal Rules of the Sandigan Bayan, 7 the 2019 Rule on Administrative Searches and Inspection under the Philippine Competition Act, 8. The 2019 Rules of Procedure for Admiralty Cases, 9. The 2019 Amendments to the 1997 Rules of Civil Procedure and to the Revised Rules on Evidence, 10. The 2019 Guidelines on the Use of Video Conferencing Technology for the Remote Appearance or Testimony of Certain Persons Deprived of Liberty, in jails and national penitentiaries piloted in the Bau City. 11. The 2020 Interim Rules on Remote Notarization of Paper Documents. 12. The 2020 Amendments to the Resolution Creating the Judicial Integrity Board 
and to Rule 140 of the Revised Rules of Court. 13. The 2020 Revised Rules of Procedure for Intellectual Property Rights Cases. 14. The 2020 Guidelines in the Imposition of Community Service as a Penalty. 15. The 2020 Guidelines for the Conduct of Video Conferencing. 16. The 2020 Guidelines for the Conduct of Court Annex Mediation and Judicial Dispute Resolution in Civil Cases. Cases. 17. The 2021 Rule on Destruction and Disposal of Dangerous Drugs, Other Substances and Instruments Prior to the Filing of an Information. 18. The 2021 Court of Appeals Rules of Procedure in Cases of Bank Inquiry into or Examination of Deposits and Investments, Accounts Relating to an Unlawful Activity or a Money Laundering Offense under Republic Act No. 9160 as amended. 19. The 2021 Rule on Asset Preservation, Seizure, and Forfeiture in Criminal Cases under Republic Act No. 9160 as amended. And 20. The 2021 Rules on Action for Support and Petition for Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Decisions or Judgment on Support. For institutionalizing and adapting the monitoring of cases like the Small Claims Monitoring System, and the continuous trial monitoring system, among others, to determine the efficiency of judges in resolving cases within the regimentary period provided by the Constitution, the laws and procedural rules, for ushering the creation of a permanent procurement offices in the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeals, the Sandigan Bayan, the Court of Tax Appeals, the Office of the Court Administrator, and the lower courts to expedite the acquisition of necessary office supplies, equipment, infrastructure, and services. For spending time to officially visit and talk to court officials and personnel in their respective offices and making court calls to check on the status and the condition of the judges and their personnel in their stations. For reconnecting with the Council of ASEAN Chief Justices and taking active part in its conferences, meetings, reform programs, and training activities. For maintaining close but independent relations with the development partners with support judiciary reform programs. For fostering the empowering projects of the Supreme Court Ladies' Circuit, SCLC, namely, one, the institution of the Chief Justice Compassion, Awareness, Education, and Safe Program on Mental Health, CJ Cares. Two, the conduct of mental wellness seminar, workshops, and disaster preparedness seminars for the officials and employees of the judiciary. Three, the conduct of livelihood programs such as basic skills training for the salon industry. Four, the donation drive for the benefit of those affected by the Al volcano eruption in January 2020. And the donation to the PGH Medical Foundation Incorporated on August 12, 2020 and March 2021, respectively. The conduct of online ramage sales as fundraising activities. Six, the publication of the SELC copy table book entitled Timeless, which documented the achievements and contribution of the SELC to the community for the past 52 years. And seven, the establishment of CJ Care's 24-7 hotline, which would provide assistance to those with mental health concerns. For harnessing the human resources, management skills, and techniques he learned from the private sector in fulfilling administrative and supervisory work as a leader of the judiciary, especially amidst the global health crisis. For being a loving son to Catalina Madarang Peralta and faithful to the legacy of Judge Elpiro Lasso Peralta. For being a devoted spouse to the Court of Appeals Associate Justice Fernanda Lampas Peralta, and a doting father to Attorney Dorothy, John Christopher, Timothy John, and John Isa, for being a humble servant of God and of the Filipino people, and holding fast to the values and virtues of the University of Santo Tomas Faculty of Civil Law, for being a source of legal knowledge, wisdom, and inspiration, as well as laughter and good memories to his colleagues, his legal and administrative staff, justices, judges, and court personnel. We express our gratitude and appreciation to our esteemed colleague and dear friend, 
Chief Justice Justado M. Peralta for his hard work and for the legacy in dispensing justice. In maintaining the rule of law and in upholding the supremacy of the Constitution, as we say farewell for now and wish him well in his future endeavors. Given this 25th day of March at the session hall of the Supreme Court of the Philippines, signed Estela M. Berna Perlas Bernabe, Senior Associate Justice, Marvick M. B. F. Leonen, Associate Justice, Alfredo Benjamines Cagiwa, Associate Justice, Alexander G. Gesmundo, Associate Justice, Ramon Paul R. Hernando, Associate Justice, Rosemary D. Caranda, Associate Justice, Abby C. Lazaro Javier, Associate Justice, Henry John Paul B. T. Associate Justice, Rodil B. Zalameda, Associate Justice, Mario V. Lopez, Associate Justice, Edgardo E. De Los Santos, Associate Justice, Samuel H. K. Irland, Associate Justice, Ricardo R. Rosario, Associate Justice, Joseph Y. Lopez, Associate Justice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Alex. I will now read my 100-page separate opinion. No, I'm just kidding. But before we go to the last presenter and the last token, I, am, I was informed that there is a surprise number. May I now therefore ask the honoree to kindly sit down and enjoy this surprise number.
Thank you uh, very much. Are we waiting for Justice Audrey to render a song? Ah, hindi na. Okay. Uh, so, those were the songs, Paano Kita Mapapasalamatan? I think the chief uh, will address that to everybody. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. The first song is Sana Wala, Wala Nang Wakas. I think that is being addressed uh, to his beloved wife. The second song is Paano Kita Mapapasalamatan? I think that is for everybody. And the third song is a tango, Por Una Cabeza. We would like to thank uh, the children of the Chief and Justice um, Audrey. Attorney Dorothy was on flute. Mr. John Christopher was on piano. Mr. Timothy John was on violin. And the other violin was his youngest son, John Isaac. Now to proceed uh, to the last token. A shortened introduction of the next presenter does injustice. A leader, a scholar, a negotiator, a counselor, a colleague, a mother, a sister, an empowered significant other, and hopefully soonest, a grandmother. She has brought the court together during many difficult times in her own way. Her scholarly opinions now mark a significant landscape of our jurisprudence. May I now call on the Honorable Senior Associate Justice, Madam 